Ibre, is the mirage people see in the desert just an illusion? Are they seeing it because they're extremely thirsty? The answer is no. They're actually seeing it for real and more than that, a mirage is such a real thing that we can take pictures of it, make videos of it and that's exactly what you'll see at the end of this video right here. A real mirage in the Namibian desert. Picture this situation. A person is walking through the desert, extremely thirsty, already ran out of water, is lost, doesn't know where they are, and suddenly sees on the horizon a lake, a shimmering body of water, super beautiful. And of course, she starts walking toward that lake to get there and drink the water. Except that she keeps walking and walking and walking and never gets to the lake. The lake keeps appearing on the horizon, but it never gets closer, until at some point it simply disappears. This is the classic mirage everyone always talks about and people really do see it because light makes a special curve. Well, not this one because this one is straight. It sounds kind of weird to say that light bends, right? Because we always picture a light beam as perfectly straight and that's exactly what's happening here. But the light isn't bending because the air around me is homogeneous. It's all the same air. It has roughly the same composition, the same temperature, but things will be very different if the light passes from one material into another Look here, the light is going straight, right? But when it hits the water, look at this crazy thing. It looks like it broke and that this light beam is bent. It enters at one angle and then comes out at another after passing through the water. It's really strange. The same thing happens if I shine the light from the water into the air. You can see here it starts at one angle but exits at another. It bends. What's going on? Because the speed of light in water is different from its speed in air. Light is slower in water. The speed of light in a vacuum is the fastest possible, about 300,000 kilometers per second. But when it travels through hot air it gets a little slower. If it's traveling through air at normal temperature, it gets even slower. In cold air, even more so. In water, it's slower still. And in sugar water, even slower than that. In physics, we say these materials are more refractive. Here, the light moves more slowly and it gradually speeds up as you go up this list. But what's interesting is what happens when light passes from one material to another. When I point the laser from air into water, it doesn't travel straight. It bends a bit right here. It's like a car driving along and suddenly you break just one of its wheels. It turns. And exactly the same thing happens when the light exits the water and goes into the air. It's like the car's wheel that's freer spins more and the car turns this way. This phenomenon is so strong that it can actually turn the other material into a mirror. Follow this light beam closely, okay? It exits the water and makes that turn I was talking about. As I change the angle here, you can see how this upper light beam gets closer to the surface of the water. It keeps getting closer and closer until a point comes when it's completely reflected back into the water. No light is coming out anymore. You can see the laser doesn't mark my hand. All the light was reflected. So look again, it's pointing out of the water. At the moment it touches the water, this reflected light beam gets even brighter. Just look at that. It got stronger. There comes a moment when these light beams bend so much they don't exit the water anymore. We call this total reflection. The air has become a mirror for whoever is underwater. But Ibre, I actually like this laser you're using. It looks cool but I clicked on this video to see a mirage. You're giving me a bunch of physics explanations. What does one thing have to do with the other? Stay calm because now that you understand exactly how this works, you'll be able to understand the mirage. Imagine a really hot desert. The air right above the sand is hot and the air higher up is farther from the sand so it's a bit cooler. There's someone walking happily through the desert, dying of thirst and looking down at the ground, already exhausted. Let's imagine a light beam coming from that point in the sky where the cloud is, okay? This light beam travels downward. So it leaves an area where the air is cooler and heads toward a place where the air is hotter. As soon as it starts hitting the warmer air, it bends. We just saw that light can bend when it moves between different materials, in this case cold air and hot air. If the light travels a little further, it bends again. If it goes even a bit more, there's total reflection just like we saw in the aquarium earlier and then it reflects back at the opposite angle from which it entered. It travels a little more, bends once again and reaches the eye of that person dying of thirst. So, the light left the cloud and reached the person's eye, but not from above, it came from below. 
The person is looking down, do you know what she sees? The cloud. The person line of sight follows this red arrow. They looking down and seeing the cloud on the ground, they are seeing a reflection, they are seeing a mirage. An important part of this phenomenon is that the piece of sky the person sees on the ground becomes wavy, almost looking like water. And that happens because the hot air rises unevenly, dancing up like smoke. And that of course makes the image look wobbly too. Now let's simulate a mirage in the desert. Since you understand it's basically a mirror forming there due to the temperature difference in the air. This here is the desert sand. These are the camels. Obviously, where would you find a desert without camels? In the background, we have the sky and finally a mirror. So check this out. The person is standing right where I am, looking at the ground and seeing the sky. That mirage right there is where they imagine there's water, a lake or something like that. But in reality, it's just a reflection of the sky. And that's why I wrote it upside down. That's because the reflection appears upside down. But Ibre, wasn't this the mirage image you were supposed to show us? The one you promised? You really think you'd click on a manual do mundo video just to see something like this? Yeah, honestly, I expected a bit more. The first time I saw a desert mirage and tried hard to take a photo was in Salar do Uni in Bolivia, which is located in the Atacama Desert. But I was inside the car, the car was shaking and the mirage appeared very far away. I had a terrible camera and it was 2006. So this is the result you're seeing here. Not great, but I managed to capture almost a mirage. After that, we spent quite some time hunting for mirages here at Manuel do Mundo. And if this happens on hot sand, you must have figured out by now that it also happens on hot asphalt. So when you look at the hot asphalt and near the horizon, it looks wet. Exactly what you're seeing is the sky's reflection or anything behind the road. It could be a forest, for example, reflected on the ground. This footage here, we recorded during our trip to Toyota's test track while filming the Doppler effect video. Here, you can see the track looked really wet, but it wasn't wet at all. The day was super sunny. This right here is already a mirage. When we shot the let's see it of a bicycle video, we also kept trying to catch these reflections on the road. They would appear, but disappear too fast. Then, shortly after that, Nathan, who used to be the cameraman for Manuel do Mundo channel for many years, was traveling to Namibia and passed through the desert. And guess what he sent me? A mirage video. And now, finally, a decent mirage image from the Namibian desert. Take a look. Doesn't this look like water on the ground? If you were thirsty in the desert, you'd definitely start walking toward that spot. So now if you ever get lost in the desert, remember, when you look at the horizon and see a little lake out there, it's pointless to walk toward it. And before getting lost, check out Natan's Instagram pictures. They're really cool. Got it? The link is right below. But Ibre, this animal here has only one hump. This is a dromedary, not a camel. I could give you credit for that, but since you're so picky, do you know the scientific name of the dromedary? Camelus dromedarius. In other words, the dromedary is a type of camel after all. If you want to go a bit further with the experiment we did in the aquarium, we once bent light using sugar. By the way, that's exactly why I included sugar water in that list on the board. Take a quick look at this experiment. It's really cool. 